What would you make with these simple ingredients? I'll tell you what I did. I made curry beef and curry aloo, also known as curry potato. And we finished off our meal with some delicious flaky soft paratha. Join me in the kitchen today and I'll show you how it's done. At the supermarket last weekend, we were limited to four packages of meat. Today, I'm going to use two. Six dollars and eighty-two cents, one and a half pounds. And this one is five dollars and eighty-four. So this is like three pounds of beef that I'm going to cook. Three pounds of beef and the three potatoes will make enough for about eight to ten servings for my family. That comes out to about a dollar and eight cents per serving. I like using all-purpose flour to wash my beef. Let me know in the comment section below what you use. Do you use lemon, lime, salt or vinegar? Because everything that comes from the supermarket is at risk for being contaminated with the virus, I rinse everything with vinegar and water. And please excuse my bird in the background. She's tweeting a lot today, just like the president. Now I'll continue with the prep for the beef. Here I have two scallions, a half an onion, some hot pepper, thyme and garlic. Hot pepper is optional, but feel free to use any variety. When it comes to the topic of garlic, you use what works best for you. I'm using almost a whole head in this recipe. If you don't have a mortar and pestle, all hope is not lost. You can use a grater. Next, I'm going to add one of my favorite ingredients, hot cherry pepper. Are you a pepper addict like I am? Let me know below. Next, I'm adding bandania, also known as Culantro or Shadow Benny in Trinidad. A good substitute for bandanya is cilantro. Cilantro is Culantro's cousin. Now it's time to season up the beef as we say in Trinidad. I'm adding half of the onion, reserving the other half for the oil, and then I'm going to add the seasoning paste we made. Next I'll add a little salt and black pepper to liven those flavors, and then we'll give it a good mix. Adding about a teaspoon and a half of salt, and one teaspoon of freshly ground black pepper. Sometimes you really got to lose that spoon to get that seasoning into the meat. We're going to give it a good massage and let it sit for about a couple of minutes or a couple of hours and then we'll start cooking. One last bit of prep. I'll chop a few leaves of bandania to add it to the pot at the end. Now that all the prep work is done, 
Let's start cooking! In a heavy bottom pot over a high heat to begin, add about a quarter cup of oil. Quarter cup of oil. This is totally optional, but you can add about a half a teaspoon of whole grain jeera. And we'll cook it until it becomes brown. Then we'll add the quarter reserved onion. Then I'll add the hot pepper and cook both until the edges become brown. Next I'll add about two and a half tablespoons of curry powder. We will stir it continuously and cook it until it darkens and becomes fragrant. Now that it's also grainy, I'm going to add about a quarter cup of water and cook it for another three minutes. As you know by now, we're developing the flavors and removing the rawness from the curry powder. The curry is now separating from the oil, which is what we would like. It's a good indication that the curry is almost ready. It smells pretty good right now. I'm smelling the pepper and the caramelized onions. Now we'll add the beef. Next we will stir it continuously to get the beef coated with that delicious curry. This process could take three to five minutes, so be patient. If you don't eat beef, you can certainly replace it with pork or lamb. Now that the sizzling has subsided, we will cover the pot and allow the beef to release and cook in its natural juices. Reduce heat to low, medium low. While that's cooking, let's get started on the curry aloo. You could have certainly added the potato to the curry beef to make curry beef and aloo, but I say, why make one when you could make two? I absolutely love the simple flavor of curry aloo. I can eat it alone with sada roti, or dosi roti, or parata roti, or dalpuri. I don't know which I love more, curry aloo or roti, but they do go well together. And as you'll see here, it really balances the heaviness and the complexity of the curry beef. In addition to the three large potatoes, I'll use quarter of a sweet onion. And if you're wondering why I use sweet onion, well that's what the husband brings home every week. I try not to go food shopping because I'll bring home the entire supermarket. And that's a known fact. Next, I'll roughly chop two leaves of bandania and one scallion. Keep in mind that you can use either or or a combination of both. Use what you have. Next, I'll cut the potato into cubes.
The prep is now complete, but let's check in our pot before we start making the curry aloo. Now I'll add the chopped scallion and the thyme and maybe a little more hot pepper. Shh, don't say a word. Now we'll cover the pot and allow all that fresh water to burn out as my mother would say. To make the curry aloo we'll use a fairly small pot because it's only about two pounds of potatoes we're using today. I'll add a quarter cup of oil, I'm using a light extra virgin olive oil and I'll place it over low heat. I'll add the sliced onions and the hot pepper and I'll cook it until the edges become golden brown. Add one tablespoon of curry powder and I'll cook it for a minute or two. Next I'll add about a half a teaspoon of turmeric for color as well as the health benefits. In goes the potato and we will stir fry it for a couple of minutes. At this point, we'll also add the chopped herbs and the thyme. I keep my thyme in the freezer, that's why it always looks questionable. I'll grate in two cloves of garlic. Then I'll cover and cook for just about two to three minutes. In the meantime, we'll get started on kneading the flour for the paratha roti, also known as basap shad. Adding one and a half cups of hot water. At this point, we're really multitasking. Don't forget to check on the pots. Half teaspoon salt. If you wanted to make a one pot curry beef and aloo, now would be a good time and to add your aloo, also called potato. Half teaspoon jira. More cumin, you can take out these sprigs, give them to stick, we need a little bit of water there, one cup of boiling water. We'll cook it down here for five minutes and then we'll add the water. Once it's making that sound, one cup of water. Let's 
stir it up to make the gravy. We can add another half cup in here. Cook it for another 10 to 15 minutes. If your beef is still very tough, you may need to add more water and cook it for a longer period of time. At this point, we'll add the chopped bandania. To finish it off. To add some freshness and color. I'm gonna cover it and simmer it on low for about 10 minutes. At this point, you can also add chopped pimento. For flavor. Next we'll start breaking up the chunks and mashing about a quarter of the potato gently to create a thick sauce and to finish the dish. Got a half a teaspoon of cumin, just a light touch. And a half a cup of water. Let's take these off. I think that's about two teaspoons of salt. We have chunks for those of you who like chunks. One tablespoon of chopped pandania. And you can add chopped pimento at this point as well. And that's it. Coriolo. It's done. Take off the stove. And there it is as well. The curry beef is also done and ready to be eaten. If you haven't seen my very popular video for paratha roti or basab shot, I'll leave the link below. Please check it out if you want the exact measurements. After we knead the flour, we'll make loyas or balls. Then we'll wrap the loyas in a very unique process. Unique but effective and effective to get those flaky layers that we all love so much. Once the wrapping is done, we'll let it sit for a couple of minutes to relax. Then we'll roll out the dough and cook. It seems like a very lengthy process, but it's worth all the effort you put into it. After all, roti, R-O-T-I just means return on time invested. And that's a Cooking with Rhea original saying. And I really wish you could smell the aroma. Now we'll beat the roti to loosen all those layers. And this is it my friends, a world-class Parata roti, also known as basapshat in Trinidad. You really have to make it if you haven't done so already. Now I'll wrap it to keep it soft until we're ready to eat. And that's it, my lovely friends, another edition of Cooking with Rhea. I really do hope that you're enjoying my recipes and learning from my videos. If you have tried any of my recipes or if you appreciate what I do, do leave me a comment below. Until next time, 
बाय बाय